You can find the product featured in today's video and so much more at Dan's Dinosaurs. Follow the link in the description below to peruse his expansive selection of all things dinosaur model and figure related. Should you choose to order anything from his site, feel free to mention in the comment box at checkout that your friend Killer Shrew fan sent you. Now, on to the review. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome once again to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews and today I will be taking a long overdue look at this. It's PNSO's new for 2022 Taurosaurus Aubrey and Infant Dubai. Dabby? Dubai? Dobby? I, I don't know. No. Revealed back in March, Aubrey here marks the seventh Ceratopsian released since 2020 from PNSO. But how did she compare to the competition? Well, let's find out. It's Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews, and this is Aubrey the Taurosaurus by PNSO. First up, let's take a quick look at that fancy schmancy packaging. This figure was released as part of the museum line, which of course means it comes in the more premium box adorned by a glamour shot of the Paint Master on the main face against a stark white background. The sides of the box are reserved for the title of the piece, along with a 135 scale indicator, picked out in a gold trim. You also get some information about the artists of PNSO, a list of what all's included in the box, and plenty of legal jargon here. And that's it, that's about all there is to go over with the box. You also get the now standard 20 posters with the figure, whether you like it or not. I won't be going over everything included in this, I don't think it's worth the time. Overall, the art is gorgeous, and I can usually find like one or two pieces I wouldn't mind framing up, but at the end of the day, it's all just a bunch of fluff trying and failing to soften the blow of the exorbitant price tag. Either way, I'm really just here for the dinosaur, you're really just here for the dinosaur, we're both just here for the dinosaur, so let's get to it. So here is the figure itself, and you know, even after having it for a couple of months now, this thing is still just as impressive as it was when I first opened it. It has such an awesome presence on the shelf, thanks in large part to its impressive size and that striking frill making it an obvious standout. As an added bonus, you also get the Infantorosaurus, who's just an adorable, chunky little man. And you know, these sorts of accessories are exactly what the museum line needs to add to its premium feel. Not posters, not cheap bases, but some little bonus pieces. Babies, skulls, or here's an idea, it's a perfect opportunity to introduce 135 scale figures of smaller species to help round out formations and give a little variation to our displays. Regardless of what it is, I'm always excited to see PNSO throwing in these little extras. It does help soften the blow of the museum line price much more than the posters ever do. Here's hoping they take it beyond just infants of the same animal, but for now, I'll take it. The sculpt of the baby itself is pretty well done for something this small. You can see all the scale and skin detail brought out through the layers of paint, and I appreciate how it isn't just a shrunk down version of the adult. You can see how the proportions and features have been rounded out to give it a more infant-like appearance, complete with some little baby fat. I think my favorite part of this little guy, though, would be those big pupper eyes. Those are just adorable. But getting into the main event herself, Aubrey here absolutely steals the show. Everything from the detail, paint, and pose come together to create a truly gorgeous figure of a species I've been wanting a decent model of for some time now. If we go in for a closer look at the head there, you can see the incredible variation in skin detail adorning the face with a larger raised keeled scales running along the squamosal down to the yellow eye, which has been seeded with lovely bags and skin folds. Now when compared to the release images, it does appear to have lost some of the complexity and scale details around the snout on the final product, along with the keratin textures in the beak and horns. These details are still present on the figure, but 
much more understated, especially in comparison to the crisp scale work along the frill and the narrow nasal of the animal. Whether the detail was lost in molding or to a simplified paint job, I'm not sure, but there's still an impressive amount of work present here. Another potential qualm with this figure, however, is that long, articulated lower mandible and the very, very long seam lines you get as a result. I will say, in person, it's not nearly as awkward looking as it was when the promotional images first dropped, but it is still a reasonable bone of contention for many. Speaking on the jaw itself, you can see that it opens to reveal the limited buccal anatomy in line with many of PNSO's recent releases and Nabavizadeh's recent publishings on quote-unquote cheeks in ornithischian dinosaurs. The soft tissue itself is handled nicely with lots of lovely flaps and folds, and looking inside the mouth gives you a peek at the rows of teeth in the upper and lower mandible. Now for the real showstopper of this piece, that massive flat frill. Not only is it huge and well sculpted with scales and the fused epocipitals around the rim, but the color is so striking with fades from orange to yellow, black markings, and even gold and blue eye spots adorning the face hearkening back to the Taurosaurus scene in Walking with Dinosaurs. It might not be quite as well painted as on the Paint Master, but I still appreciate just how showy they made the frill of this animal. Not just because it puts me in mind of the old WWD dinosaurs, but because it helps illustrate possible disparities in function between Taurosaurus and Triceratops. Unlike Triceratops, whose frill was solid through and through, Taurosaurus did have large openings in its frill. In fact, those perforations are exactly where it gets its name from and potentially indicate that unlike Triceratops, whose solid frill could be used for defense, Taurosaurus's may have been more for display, and PNSO really mined that idea with this figure to ensure its defining feature really exploded off the shelf, especially in comparison to the more drab colors of Doyle's protective frill. Unfortunately, unlike the vibrantly colored front, the back of the frill is just a solid mass of orange. Luckily, you can't really see that when it's on display, but just looking at it really gives you a sinking feeling that it was a massive corner cut by PNSO. As far as the rest of the detail work goes on the body, it's a gorgeous take on that classic Ceratopsian integument, with the non-overlapping scales dotted by larger raised scales covering the entire surface area. Meanwhile, the movement of the skin around the motions of the limb, neck, and tail has been beautifully rendered, either being pushed up against the torso with the craning neck, bracing front limbs and lifted leg, or pulling away with the bracing left leg. And speaking on the limbs, you can see they are very well muscled and feature their own areas of bunching skin around the joints. The feet then feature the correct treatment of the digits, and I love how they accentuated the slight movement of the limbs with the light curling of the lifted toes or splaying of the planted ones. Then of course you have the tail, which is nice and stubby, and you can see all sorts of wrinkles and skin folds forming with its slight curl. Something else I appreciate about this figure is its overall heft. I love the drooping gut and how the limbs are pressed against the swell of the torso. It really gives this figure an impressive sense of bulk, and when you take it in from a dorsal view, you can really see that Aubrey indeed has got some junk in her trunk. Meanwhile, if you move along the underbelly, you'll note the more rectangular scales running across the swell of the stomach, as well as gathering areas of hanging skin, all leading down to the cloaca. As far as the pose goes, I find it very effective. The front limbs are braced along with the back left leg while the back right leg is lifted ever so slightly off the ground while the head is held high and at alert. With the mouth shut, it almost looks as though Aubrey has come to a dead halt mid-stride and is now thinking out her next move before putting her foot down. Meanwhile, with the mouth open, it looks as though she's giving a bellow while bracing for a mock charge. There's a lot of character, life, and movement behind the pose without it being extreme, which I always appreciate. And whereas I can enjoy the simplicity behind the pose of figures like their Triceratops, I'll always prefer these more active poses that emphasize the power and attitude of a figure. So that's the sculpt of this thing. Now let's talk paint. We already went over the frill, but the main body coloration is just as nice, if not quite as 
flashy. The underbelly consists of peach and tan tones that transition seamlessly into the grayish blue tones of the lateral and dorsal regions. You then get a dusty wash between all the scales to really help those details pop, while simultaneously giving the animal a dirty, lived-in appearance. So even though the figure isn't without its quirks, I think it's safe to say that the overall sculpt paint and presentation of it really put it over the edge, making it my personal favorite Ceratopsian from PNSO to date. And when paired with the infant, you really do get a cool display. Now as far as the size of the figures go, for the adult, you're looking at around 8.5 inches long in a straight measurement, or about 21.5 centimeters, and then she stands in at around 4.5 inches, or around 11.5 centimeters tall at the height of the frill. That being said, if you went along the curve, you'd actually see the figure ekes out just around 9 inches in length, or roughly 23 centimeters, putting it nicely at 135 scale for an estimated 26 foot specimen. Meanwhile, the infant measured just over 2 inches long, or around 5.5 centimeters, and only comes in at around 1 inch off the ground, or around 2.5 centimeters. So, a very little baby indeed. Now let's get into some size comparisons, starting off with the precious few other Taurosaurus figures I have in my collection. First up, we have the Collecta offering, which for years was really the only choice for those who couldn't find the old Toyway model. I actually reviewed this figure on my channel a few years ago, and suffice it to say, it isn't my favorite offering out there. That's why I'm glad PNSO really delivered with Aubrey here. Now for the only other Taurosaurus I own, it's the massive Beasts of the Mesozoic 118 scale offering, and you can see that Aubrey is only about the size of that beast's head. Now, I love the articulated big beasts of the Mesozoic figures, really I do, but it's also nice to have a more modest scaled, static model of the animal in the collection. Now let's get into some other PNSO Ceratopsian comparisons, starting with the most recent, the Styracosaurus Anthony. Anthony here was my favorite for a brief spell, but his reign was indeed short-lived. Although I still love the subtleties of his sculpt and paint, I think Aubrey here really blows everything PNSO has done regarding their Ceratopsians out of the water. Then we have Genie, the Centrosaurus, quite the mixed bag of a figure. And next we have Perez, the Machairoceratops, easily my least favorite Ceratopsian from PNSO to date, and perhaps one of my least favorite figures from them in general. Sorry, little dude. And then here is Aubrey and Dubai with Achi, the Cenoceratops. Then we have Brian, the Pachyrhinosaurus. Duke, the Spinops. And we'll end the Ceratopsian comparisons with Doyle the Triceratops, the only other museum line Ceratopsian from PNSO in recent memory. Now, obviously, there's the controversial topic of Taurosaurus possibly being a growth stage of Triceratops, and seeing as I don't put any stock in that argument, it's comforting to see that PNSO apparently doesn't either. You can see the obvious differences in the nasal and brow horns, as well as the distinctly scalloped shape of Triceratops' frill in comparison to the long, flat frill of Taurosaurus. Of course, it's fair to say that most Ceratopsians seem to boast plenty of room for morphological variation, even between Taurosaurus specimens, but it's nice to see such a distinct disparity between these two genera from the company. And for those of you wondering which one I recommend, I'm actually surprised how little contest there is here. Aubrey wins by a mile, in my opinion. And there's a nice group shot of all the Ceratopsians from PNSO's recent years together. I said at the beginning what a standout Aubrey was given her size and flashy frill, and if this doesn't prove that, then I honestly don't know what will. Either way, it's great to see them all together, but is it greedy of me to hope for even more? And finally, the obligate Tyrannosaurus Rex comparison. Here's Aubrey alongside Wilson, and I think these two look great together, especially when you add in the infant. I think that really opens up the door for some cool diorama displays and or toy photography. Now for those of you wondering, yes, she does also look good with Lu Zhong, the Zhu Cheng Tyrannus, which if you caught my review of that figure, you know I think it would work fine as a Rex stand-in for anyone wanting a Rex with the smoother PNSO texturing. 
And that was PNSO's Aubrey and Dubai Taurosaurus Duo. Overall, this is another slam dunk from the company, and one that continues their 2022 winning streak. The sculpt, paint, and pose of Aubrey all work so well, and the infant makes for a really cool addition that lets you round out your display with some smaller figures. If you only get one Ceratopsian from the PNSO lineup, this Dynomite offering should definitely be it. But as always, I want to know what you guys think of this model. Do you own it yet? Are you planning to pick it up? What has been your favorite Ceratopsian release from the company so far? And what would you like to see them do next? Personally, I would love to see PNSO continue with the big frill aesthetic, either with a Chasmosaurus or Pentaceratops. And of course, a Cosmoceratops would certainly be a must-buy. Maybe smaller animals like Protoceratops or Cetacosaurus would be cool additions, perhaps released in a multi-pack to justify slotting into the prehistoric animal line price bracket. Anyways, leave all of your thoughts in the comments section below, and once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you all again soon for the next one. Until then, take care out there, and bye bye